from Sew Jewish. I'm going to show you a technique that you can use when you're sewing a tallit. Specifically, this technique is for making the holes in the corner of the tallit for the tzitzit strings. And it's especially useful if your machine doesn't have an automatic setting for sewing circles. Let me show you what I mean. This is a commercially available tallit, also known as a talus or a prayer shawl. You can see here on the corner of the tallit where the tzitzit strings come out. There's a nice circular hole of reinforced stitches. Now, some machines can make these automatically on a setting called an eyelet setting. But if your machine doesn't have an automatic setting for an eyelet, making these nice regular circles can get tricky, and it's hard to get a nice effect. And I struggled with it quite a bit when I started making tallits until I came up with the technique that I'm about to show you. And basically what we're going to do is instead of trying to make circles, we're going to make hexagons because making a series of straight lines is a lot easier than making a circle. And let me show you what it's going to look like. So this is a sample corner piece showing the hexagon and the hole cut out of the middle. We're going to use a pattern to help us make the hexagon shape and to get the hole in the right place on the corner of the tallit. This pattern is a Jerusalem pattern from So Jewish. But you can also find on our blog a generic or general um, pattern for making these hexagon holes um, that you can use with any four inch square corner piece and that's free and printable at sojewish.com and if you're watching this on YouTube we'll have the uh, link in the description. I'm going to go through the technique in a lot of detail because I know there are a lot of beginning sewers out there and I want everyone to be able to do this. But once I've gone through it you'll see that it's pretty straightforward and once you've done a couple it's really a snap. Now these are the things we need. We need a tallit with the corner piece already sewn on. This piece of fabric is going to fill in for a tallit. We need the pattern. We need thread in our machine. And you might also, depending on your particular tallit, need some stabilizer underneath. Now, this corner piece doesn't need stabilizer because underneath the applique is a fusible interfacing. But if you're just using a plain piece of lightweight or medium weight fabric, you're also going to want to put some stabilizer underneath. And make sure it's tear away stabilizer and not cut away stabilizer. To start, make sure your machine is set for straight stitching. You want to set the stitch length so it's pretty short, shorter than you use for most things. My um, length gauge goes from zero to five and I'm going to set it to one and a half. All right, get everything onto the machine and start by putting the needle down in one of the corners of the hexagon. Take a couple of anchor stitches backwards. I'm going to walk it to get it started. And then continue on tracing the hexagon with straight stitches. And when you get to the corner, Lift up the pressure foot, pivot the fabric and pattern, and do the next side. Now if you need to, you can pick up the, uh, the needle and move it a little bit. Uh, move the fabric a little bit if, if the um, needle just isn't landing close to the corner, but this is doing really nicely. And I'm just, I'm just going to hand walk it because I like the control that I'm getting here. And the last side. See here, I'm going to just make an adjustment. I'm going to move it. There we go. All right, I'm all the way around the hexagon. I'm going to lift the pressure foot and with the needle still in the fabric, I'm now going to tear the pattern away from the fabric. It 
can be useful to use um, the nose of the scissors or even some tweezers to pull that away. If you can get the paper out of the middle, that's great, but if you can't, it's okay to leave it in there for now. There we go. That came out pretty easily. Now we're going to switch to zigzag stitches and we're going to trace um, the straight stitches with zigzag stitches. First, I'm going to trim that thread. Put the presser foot down. I'm going to lift up the needle. And now I'm going to switch to zigzag. I'm going to set my machine for a narrow to medium width zigzag. Again, on, on my scale from 1 to 5, I'm going to set it at, at a 2. And the stitch width, I'm going to go all the way down, very short, to a satin stitch, nearly to zero. Now I'm going to retrace the straight stitches with the zigzag stitches. I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I want the zigzag stitches to be centered on the straight stitches. Once I get a few, I know I'm going good. Okay. And now I take one side at a time, and I'm going to pivot once I get to each corner. And I like walking the machine once it gets close to the corner. Now, here's a big tip. As you're moving along one of the sides and your machine is zigzagging and you're getting close to the point where you're going to need to pivot at the corner, Watch the needle as it moves from your right to your left, and stop at a point where the needle is on the right, where it's in the fabric on the right side and the outside of the hexagon. Then when you pivot, it's going to give you a nice um, full set of stitches at that corner. It's just going to look a lot nicer than if you stop on the inside of the hexagon. All right, so keep going around the entire shape. By the way, I do have one of those fancy programmable sewing and embroidery machines, which I love using, but I also love this simple machine, my workhorse, and simple techniques, and I love being able to show you simple techniques for making Judaica, because you really can do a lot with just straight stitches and zigzag stitches. And I actually sold computerized embroidery, sewing and embroidery machines for a while, and I was really bad at that job. In three months, I sold one machine. And, well, one of the reasons I was so bad at it was because I was working in the evening when there weren't very many people around. But the other reason was that when I got to the price, and the machines were very expensive, and people balked at the price, I told them what I'm going to tell you, which is that you don't need to start on a fancy machine. You can get a simple machine that does straight stitching and zigzag stitching for about $100, and you can sew a world with that. And then later, when you can get to, you know, ready for another level, then you can get a serger or a computerized machine. They, they really are really handy, and they really are really fun, but you don't need one to start. Okay, now with the zigzag stitching done, I'm going to switch my machine back to a straight stitch, and I'm going to change the stitch length to where it was before. And I'm going to take two straight stitches backwards on the outside of the hexagon. You can move the tallit a little bit if you need to, to get it get the needle right up alongside the zigzag stitches. There we go. There you go. A nice hexagon of reinforced st stitches. I'm going to trim the thread. stabilizer on the back of the delete, now's the time to tear that away. The last thing we need to do is to remove the fabric from the inside of the hexagon. The way to do that is to fold the fabric at the hexagon and take some sharp nosed scissors. I have some little scissors here 
and you want to make a few snips in the fabric without cutting the reinforcing zigzag stitches. That's very important. Let's go do that. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the back, still being careful not to catch the zigzag stitches. Then, just really carefully, just start removing, cutting away the threads on the inside. The, the actual, when I say threads, I mean the, the fibers of the fabric. Now here's a really important point. You do not need to cut all the way up to the zigzag stitches. In fact, it would be best if you didn't get particularly close to them, because if you cut them, then you're going to have to reinforce those stitches again by hand, which you can do, and it's not the end of the world. But you don't need to get very close to the zigzag stitches in order to get a nice hole. Just sort of snip fabric away, working from both sides. And I'm going to actually slow down a little bit because I don't want to catch any of those zigzag threads. And as you start getting the hole here, you can use like the, the nose of the scissors to work the hole a little bit more, and then you just sort of, you're, you're fraying this fabric without cutting it. And you're not endangering those zigzag stitches. Alright, let me just clean it up a little bit, and I'm going to switch to these, my other scissors, which I know, I just feel like they're going to work best for getting some more out. All right. It's better to stop earlier than later, although I feel like I want to get a few more out of here. There you go. Air on the side of taking out less than more. It's better to take out less than more. Then when you get to the point of actually tying the seat seat strings on your tallit, if you need to take out a little bit more or if you want to use again the nose or the scissors to open up the hole a little bit more, you can do that. And like I said, if by accident you do cut through those reinforcing zigzag threads, you can use a needle and thread by hand to sew some more stitches around there to repair it. Let's see. There we go. And that, there you have it. A nice hole for your seat seat strings. Once you finish four of these on the four corners of your tilly, you're going to be an absolute pro. Now, remember, you can find the free generic pattern on the Sew Jewish blog at sewjewish.com. And you can also look for information there about the Jerusalem pattern. And finally, if you would like us to let you know when we put up new videos, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.